Well, hello friends, welcome back to Browser Hacking. Today, we are gonna take a look at my friend Linus's homepage, um, which is at linus.dev. And uh, here's what it looks like in the Serenity browser. Um, and we'll also take a look at it in, um, in Firefox. So as you can see here, uh, a bunch of things on the site don't look quite right, but um, this page is very nice because it's simple enough that it's totally within reach to render it correctly. It's just um, we're missing a bunch of features and functionality. So some stuff here that stands out is that um, we don't get the German and UK flag um, because we don't have emojis for those. And I think also maybe they are multi-code point, um, which we don't support. And then uh, we don't load the GitHub repo cards correctly. And uh, that's mostly because we don't support uh, async functions in JavaScript. And then uh, at the bottom here is a flex box that we also don't support. So I figured today um, we would just try to do something correctly on the site. So I figured we would put together maybe like a really, really naive um, flexbox layout thingy um, that just grabs everything within the flexbox and just um, mashes it together on a single horizontal line. Um, that would be a place to start. And they would also conveniently cover uh, the use of flexbox here, I think. So if we take a look here, um, Tap, 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 tap. Where are all these links in the footer? Of course, right. So, um, flex, and it's just display flex on this footer div, or on the footer element, and then everything in it is just a bunch of block level uh, anchor tags with some text in between them. So. I think in practice, what we want to do here um, without <laughs> without actually reading the spec is that um, when we encounter display flex, we want to uh, make a flex uh, formatting context and then um, grab all of the boxes and just uh, iterate through all of the block level boxes and just um, like place them on a horizontal line, right? And then I guess the boxes themselves are uh, shrink to fit layout, which means that they sort of um, are automatically sized so that their content fits. Um, that looks like an approximation at least of how this would work. And then we'll just ignore all of the other features of Flexbox for now. So I think that would be pretty good. Let's um, see. So let's let's um, let's copy his homepage so that we are not hitting his server over and over. Um, so we'll just do something like this, and what do we have here? Um, yeah, we'll just do this. And then we'll rename it and we'll see, does this work? Um, <laughs> we'll see now. Now it looks very similar to the way it looks here. Um, great. I think uh, if we actually make it load the CSS though, um, that's a, oh, that's a preload link. Wow. My man's fancy using preload links and stuff. Um, ba -ba 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 Wait, why doesn't that thing load? Um, oh, right, avatar images. Okay, here we go. Right, so now we have our own local copy of it, um, which will be good for testing. And then let's see if we can just make a um, flex flex formatting context. I think that's what we should call it. 
something like that. Is that a, is that a, the right term? Let me just check formatting context. Uh, flex formatting context with layout its children as flex items. Well, if MDN says it, that's good enough for me. Okay, so um, let's see. Touch flex formatting context. And then we'll put that right next to Mr. Formatting Context right here. And we're good. Okay. So, um, how do we do this? Well, I have no clue. I, I've never actually personally used Flexbox for anything ever. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, that's why we're starting with something extremely naive. Um, so let's, let's see, let's begin with one of the other formatting contexts as a base. So currently we have three formatting context subclasses, block formatting context, inline formatting context, and table formatting context. So this will be a fourth uh, formatting context type and uh, formatting contexts, basically, did, um, they are the workhorse classes that uh, perform the work of layout within uh, a, a box in uh, the LibWeb engine. So uh, depending on the display property of a box, um, you have to lay out the inside of that box in different ways. So if something is a block, then you lay out um, the inside in a certain way and so on. Um, and if something is a table, there's another way. And if something is a flex box, then I guess we got to do a flex thing. Um, but instead of talking about it, let's just, uh, let's just slap the code around a bit and see, see what we can achieve. So we'll just make an extremely bare bones context here. Um, Okay, so essentially this is like the bare minimum formatting context. It just has a constructor, um, destructor, and the run function. And essentially, layout is performed recursively starting at the, um, the root of the layout tree. And um, whenever we enter into a box, we recurse into a box, then we look at the, um, the display property of that box to determine if we need to instantiate a new formatting context. And if so, uh, we do that and then we call run on that new context. So this is going to be called, actually let's set up the call to this thing right away. Because there's this thing called layout inside. So layout inside is um, called whenever you want to lay out the inside of a box. Um, you can see here, like, if we need to create a block formatting context for this box, which is a question answered by a bunch of conditions, uh, then we make a new block formatting context, put it on the stack here, so they're, they're actually nested. Um, you can see that it passes the current formatting context as a par um, parent argument to the formatting context, so they, they keep track of, like, the um, parent chain of contexts. Um, so I think here what we'll do is we'll simply check if box um, computed values display is CSS display flex. Is that a thing? Is that, that's not a thing. Okay. Um, oh, where is that? Um, Uh, oh, it's simply not a thing yet. Well, we can just add it. So flex. And I guess we need to add it in a couple more places. Like this is the CSS identifiers uh, list. So it's just stuff that the parser will recognize. So we'll add it here. And um, display.
Okay. So, if the computed values display is CSS display flex, then uh, flex formatting context for this box, this context is the parent, and then we will simply run the flex formatting context on the box. And I worked on this in the new year, so let's write that down. Okay. So that compiled amazingly, almost. Um, I guess we need to actually implement some of this class now, since we're calling it. Name space web layout. All right. Flexamundo. Okay, so we have the context box and we have the um, the layout mode. Okay, and then finally, uh, run. Um, wait, the layout mode is not a argument to the constructor is a formatting context. Parent. Okay, so context box and parent. Cool. Okay, so let's see. I guess what we can do here is we can simply iterate the boxes and see what kind of children we have. So let's just do, let's just start by doing that. Um, box, right. So for each child, um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what kind of children we're going to have. I guess we, we care about, um, we care about block level children. So essentially like um, this text here in between the uh, anchor elements is going to be um, wrapped in anonymous boxes, right? Because, or at least I think, I mean, here it calls them flex items, but I think for simplicity, we can just wrap them in um, anonymous boxes. I feel like that might be the easiest approach. Although I'm not, I'm not 100% sure that that's the correct approach, but uh, it seems like the easiest approach at the moment. We need to have them in some kind of box at least. Um, because they, I think they need to participate in the box model, right? Or do they? Um, I'm unsure. Let's not think too much about it. You know what? Let's let's actually just um, do nothing in here for starters, and we'll take a look at the layout tree instead, just to see what we are working with. Uh, oops. Uh huh. Well, that didn't go well. Element CPP. We have a crash. Create layout node. Uh, oh, I guess we don't know what kind of layout node to create for a um, um, for display flex. So we actually assert when we don't know what layout node to create. I mean, that's okay. I think we can just, maybe we can just make a, um, like a regular box here. So I don't know, um, I'm just thinking maybe this doesn't need to get so complicated. So what if we just make a box? 
What's the worst that could happen? Layout box, document, node, and la la la. Okay. In the past, we have had like um, subclasses of layout node for every different type of layout thingy. But uh, after refactoring the layout system and moving to these formatting contexts, um, there's much less need for specialized subclasses of layout node. And um, all of the actual layout work is done by the formatting context instead. Um, previously, the layout work was within each layout node subclass. So sort of uh, it's been turned inside out. And I think maybe we don't actually need a sort of a layout flexbox class or whatever. Um, all right, so everything fell apart. Fine. So what are we looking at here? We have a box body. Oh, I guess the body element is display flex as well. Yeah, right. So. Okay, so if body is um, allowed to be the default, which is block, I guess then uh, this thing ends up working a little differently. But when it is flex, that's when it snaps into the middle that way, which looks kind of neato. Align item center. Okay, okay, so. Hmm. Interesting. So when we turn on this thing, then. Um, actually, we have to deal with the body element, too. I, I thought we would only have to deal with this thing at the bottom. But it seems like the whole body is going to be pulled into this, these shenanigans. Um, okay, well, fair enough, fair enough. Um, let's just keep going forward then. So I think um, we'll just keep going with the original plan anyway and see what happens. So, um, looking at the layout tree here, we see that we have a um, body here, which is a box now, which is flexi. And we also have a box for the footer. Maybe we should mark these somehow in the web dump thingy. We have some things here where we mark stuff. So like if box computed values display CSS display flex, then let's just say uh, flex color on. That's a very uh, unassuming color, actually. I um, should have picked something better. I'll go with 34. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so we have the body is flex and the footer is flex. Okay. And then uh, we already. We already did the work of wrapping all of these text nodes here into anonymous boxes, or anonymous block level boxes, as you can see. So all the children of this footer flex box um, are already block level. So that helps us, because then all we need to do to make this thing render nicely is to iterate through the children and um, figure out the width for each one, and then like stack them on a line, right? So let's see how we would do that. So box for each child of type block box. Let's do block children. Okay. Um, 
child box. All right, and then let's see. So child box. Wait, first we need to know. I was thinking we need to know how wide this box is, but I think we already know that. Or do we? Maybe we don't. Hmm. Okay, well, let's not worry about that too much. Let's see. Let's just um, try laying out the children. So. Child box dot. Um, wait, what is the thing that we want to do now? I want to figure out the width for each one. What is the width of somebody here? The width of all of these things is going to it's going to be complicated, but in the simple scenario where none of them have a specified width, then it's just a matter of saying like layout inside and then compute based on that. That's your width. So let's just assume everybody is shrink to fit. So layout inside child box, um, layout mode, I guess. And then what do we learn from that? Let's see what happens if we just run layout inside. I'm I'm a little bit um, confused on how we're gonna achieve this. So we'll see. Okay, what went wrong here? Uh, ba -ba Flex formatting context calls layout inside, which calls inline formatting context, which is very sad. In inline formatting context, something asserting. Um, that doesn't look healthy at all. What's going on here? Available space for line. I feel like somebody's making assumptions here. It's assuming that its parent is a block formatting context. Hmm, well, you can't be doing that because your parent is now not a block formatting context. Dang. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, I think we're gonna, we're gonna um, come up with something here. So, We'll do a dynamic cast to figure out if this is indeed a block formatting context. And if it is, um, this is about like uh, figuring out what happens with the floats in a block formatting context. So I think we'll have to do something like this. This is a little gunky, but Okay. All right. Flex formatting context. Layout inside. Hmm. Oh, wait, what's going on with this anyway? Um, if so, I'm, what's failing here is block formatting context. Okay, so we assume we're trying to nest into the first child um, 
lay out the first child box of the flex box, but formatting context layout inside says, uh, hey, wait a minute, I'm not a block formatting context, I cannot lay out inside. So I think uh, we need to actually create a new block formatting context for the child of a flex item. Um, block formatting context. There's a list somewhere of like things that establish a block formatting context. Oh, here we go. Um, flex items. Direct children of the element with display flex or inline flex if they are neither flex nor grid nor table containers themselves. Right, so if something is a direct child of somebody who's display flex or display inline flex. So let's take care of that. Uh, if box parent and box parent display fix me uh, inline flex as well. Yeah, we don't have inline flex yet, obviously, so I'll just leave a fix me about that. Um, okay, so if parent is flex, then let's return true. Um, I guess, oh, wait, hold on. Uh, that should only be if we ourselves are not flex grid nor table. So, computed values display. Yeah, so, um, Let's make a note of that. Like, okay, so that means that we will lay out inside. We'll establish a new block formatting context for the children because they are direct children of a flex box. Okay, here we go. Good. Now everything is sort of back to normal, except the uh, footer is nowhere to be found. Um, hmm. Interesting. But at least we we uh, laid out the body okay-ishly. Although it says that the size is or the height is zero, which is obviously not correct. But we sort of get away with it because uh, it just doesn't respect the height of the body element anyway. Okay. Well, ignoring that. Um, so it's probably not enough to simply lay out inside. We also need to... Well, what do we need to do here? Why do we not see any text here? Also, that inline formatting context thing, um, maybe that problem actually goes away. The, um, we don't need to dynamic cast the parent context because now there will always be a block formatting context surrounding the inline formatting context. Maybe. I'm not completely sure. Yeah, that's how it turned out. Okay. That's good. All right. So, we need to figure out the width. So let's see, um, flex item, let's see, layout flex item, um, flexing parent, let's see. Okay, so this is the box class name. Uh, we'll do something like this so we can see where we are. And we'll also say like flexing child. And this is the child box. Cool. Just want to see what kind of objects we're running on here. Okay, so... 
running on box 2DC D114. 2DC D114, that's the body. Hmm. Seems like we're not running on the footer at all. Which is really weird. What's up with that? Why are we not getting to that thing? Um, so footer is a child of, oh, it's a child of, um, of body. So it's a flex child of flex. Right. So we call layout inside. Then it's a flex child of flex. So we simply make a new flex formatting context and then run it. Wait, but I feel like then we should do the thing. Okay, hold on. Flexing child. Right, so we're not actually... Oh, I see the problem. <laughs> Because I'm uh, I'm only iterating block box children, so I, I um, constrained the type of child that we're iterating here. But we should um, we should iterate all child boxes, not just block level boxes. Okay. Cool. So now we can see the um, footer <laughs> footer neatly stacked up near the top there, and um, it has text fragments. It's been split into text fragments, which is good because that means that um, we have something to work with. So our footer is at x, y, 0, 0. It's 0 by 0 pixels size. Um, and then these um, block boxes for each anchor tag are all um, they're like behaving like normal block uh, level items, so they're like full width. Um, so we need to make them shrink to fit. And how do we normally do that? We have shrink to fit stuff everywhere, but I forget how to use it. Shrink to fit width, right. So calculate shrink to fit width. That's what we want. So we want to calculate that for the child box. And then what happens if we say child box, or let's say um, width is result dot. Um, oh man, I, I forget what the algorithm is, that, but I bet we can just take it from somewhere. It's usually something like min of max of preferred minimum width available with preferred with blah 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 yeah right so this is sort of the typical shrink to fit algorithm um, shrink to fit with shrink to fit result let's just um, be extra explicit here and then the available width in our case we need to figure that out. So the available width for flexing um, is the width of the container, I guess. Um, but what happens if we just say that we don't have any available width and we just ignore that? Um, and we just like allow everybody to become their or mm, I'm not completely sure about this, but let's just uh, push forward and see what we can come up with. So we'll say like child box set width shrink to fit width. Then what happens? All right dump the layout tree and they're all very wide still like six one six pixels wide so actually if we look here we can see that 
Um, if we go to the footer, yeah, these are all very wide, right? So, um, min, wait, what are we actually calculating here even? Like, so there are two widths coming out of the shrink to fit algorithm. There's the preferred minimum width and the preferred width. So preferred width is like, if you didn't force any line breaks, how wide would this thing be? It's like the maximum width. And then there's the preferred minimum, which is like, if you inserted every possible line break, how wide would it be? But I think maybe what's happening is that layout inside is pulling a sneaky one on us and actually setting the width. Hmm, yeah, there's some there's some sneaky business about that. See here, um, black, block formatting context currently computes the width and height of the target box. This is necessary to be able to place absolutely position descendants. Um, so I think when we when we run the um, block formatting context on the nested block, then it actually ends up setting the width. So we kind of, I think maybe this gets thrown out. So what happens if we set that after instead? But wait, but then how does he know how much space he has? Maybe he doesn't. Yeah, this, this clearly needs some, some more thinking, but uh, at least we can, we can hack it like this for now. So we set the width after doing the um, layout inside and that, then we see that these um, fragments are now like 37 wide, 45 wide, and so on. So this actually sounds pretty good. Um, definitely not perfect and a very hackish approach, but we can see now that they are the, um, the sort of the width of the text that we need. So next step is simply to um, lay them out on the line. So I think uh, we'll sort of go through this in two passes here. So we'll, first we'll do like a sizing pass. Um, first compute the uh, width of each flex item. Let's see, fix me. This is uh, extremely naive and only supports uh, flex items laid out on a single horizontal line. Um, but you have to start somewhere, right? So we're just getting our bearings. So then, then um, place the items on a line. For each child of type box, um, then what we need to do is simply Take each of them, put one um, wherever we want to start from the left, and then start like filling in to the right. So I guess we'll do something like X, like this, right? And then set offset X um, zero, maybe? And then then what happens? Then uh, we need to in increase x plus equals child box width. Um, and we'll just like ignore everything related to margins and whatnots right now. So if we just do that, like the bare minimum, see, now they're on a line. Neat, right? Um, maybe we can grab the, um, the border box width instead. That seems kind of reasonable. So the border box is padding plus, uh, padding plus uh, content border. Should we use the margin box? Do we have the margin box? Oh, we can make something that 
generates the margin box width. No trouble. didn't really matter but um, anyway I think we're good for a start here so what can we do with this um, one thing is that we are placing everything at y coordinate 0 right now and that's not quite right um, I'm thinking shit our flex boxes block level flex box block level are they I don't, I don't know our flex items block level um, flex items are considered to be at the flex level uh-huh mm -hmm. a flex item establishes an independent formatting context blah 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 The display value of a flex item is blockified. Mm. Well, I don't, I don't want to get too into the specs right now because then I'm just going to um, focus on the wrong things. So let's not worry too much about that. Um, there will be plenty of time to, to look at all of this. Uh, in the future, but uh, right now we just want to make something hackish that sort of kind of maybe works a little bit <laughs> or does does something remotely resembling what we want. So we want these things to have a Y offset. Um, but if we look at the layout tree, so for the block, uh, for the for the body uh, element, it doesn't really matter that we are at zero zero because that's sort of where it's at anyway in the document but clearly the footer should not be a y zero it should be um, directly below this block box right here so I think I'm thinking maybe like for now the easiest thing would be that we um, generate block level boxes for flex containers because then the block formatting context will place them uh, in relation to other block level items uh, and I think then that they would sort of just snap into place so let's try doing that um, it's very possible that that's not like the completely correct behavior but uh, we just start with something. So here, instead of making a box, we make a block box. And then we can actually re-hide these constructors because we don't need them to be public anymore. All right. Interesting. So now it's actually looking a little bit like um, like our local copy here did when I was messing with the CSS properties. So yeah, let's see if we can inspect here. The height is still totally wrong, but maybe that's okay. Yeah, so these boys are over here, that's fine. But, okay, yeah, yeah right. So body now has, uh, body is a flex container. It has main and footer, main and footer. So this is main and footer is here. Footer does not have dimensions for some reason. I think it doesn't have height, um, but these boys do. So um, essentially we sort of distributed the space here between the um, 
the main element on the left and the footer on the right. Oops. And align items center. Wait, what does that actually do? Flex direction column. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not like familiar <laughs> with these properties. So I'm just kind of guessing what they do based on what happens when I click on them. Um, flex direction column. Okay. Right, so that means that uh, the body element sort of flexes uh, vertically and the footer flexes uh, horizontally. It looks like flex direction. Let's look that up. Flex direction. So there's row and column. Sure. And column is stacked. Uh huh. And then you have reverse, which I guess is like uh, top to bottom or bottom to top. Okay. That's interesting. Okay, so basically the flex direction. I think like the simplified uh, way to support that would just be to have um, like vertical stacking or horizontal stacking of items. And that's totally something we can do here, even with our super hackish bare bones approach. So we just need to um, parse the flex direction property and uh, try to do something sensible with it. So let's try that. Um, but uh, you know, let's commit this first, even though it's like super duper duper hackish, let's still commit it. Um, cause we're just iterating on stuff here anyway. And that's totally fine. This is how we build things. So just adding the, let's just add the flex, um, display thingy everywhere. Um, thumb, 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 thumb. Lib web parse, um, display flex and create block box layout nodes for them. I'm not. 100% sure that block box is the right layout node for flex containers, but it um, it's the uh, most fitting, most obviously fitting one we already have. Yeah, let's say. And then let's also add the margin box width thing. And box uh, layout box margin box width. Just a little helper. Okay, and then let's add the formatting context class. Um, oh. Add a um, a very naive um, flex formatting context. Um, <laughs> this uh, is very dumb and um, only uh, lays out its child boxes on a horizontal line after shrink to fitting them. Um, Uh, after comp hold the line uh, with their shrink to fit width. Yeah. Um, but you have to start somewhere. Yes, indeed. So let's uh, parse that 
flex um, direction property. Direction. Um, so we need to have a new enum for that in the CSS namespace here. So that would be something like flex direction. I keep wanting to type flex directory, like my muscle memory types directory by default. Um, okay, so what were the values? Row, row reverse, column, column, reverse. That's it. Row, row, uh, reverse, column, column, reverse. Uh, yes, those are the values. Initial value is row, got it. Okay, so for computed values, let's see. Direction. Row was the initial value. And um, flex direction. Is that inherited? It's not inherited, so non-inherited. Um, goes right here. doing all the boilerplate stuff for copying um, copying the CSS the parsed CSS style into the actual layout node object so it's a bunch of boilerplate for adding a new property um, okay computed value set flex direction direction value. We're almost there. <laughs> now we have to add a little bit more stuff, something that actually parses it from a CSS identifier into a um, CSS flex direction enum. The CSS um, parsing and cascading stuff in libweb is quite weak. And it's something that we need to improve. There's been a pull request uh, implementing a new spec compliance CSS parser in the queue for a long time, but it's like it's not quite finished. Um, but at some point, we're going to have to pick that up and finish it, I think, because it's sort of it's kind of holding us back, not having a better CSS parser. Uh, sometimes I feel that way, but. For now, we can push forward. It's just um, some features are like prohibitively um, difficult to implement without a proper parser. So we'll see. Hmm. So what was I doing? Flex direction. Property ID, flex direction. Right, I added it to the wrong place before. So let's see. Alphabetical order. Inherited, false. Initial. Row. Right, and then in identifiers, I shouldn't have added it here because it's not an identifier. It is actually here we want like a row column and row reverse column reverse. So row. Um, 
Cool. Switch value um, value two identifier. Flex direction. Oh. Uh, man. I wonder what's going to be more cumbersome, like implementing the, all the parsing of the property or uh, implementing the property behavior. But that should be the end of parsing. Cool. So now we're just going to verify that we actually parse it um, into a comprehensible format, and then we'll commit this uh, parsing individually so that it doesn't muddy up the implementation of the behavior. Um, so if we look at um, the body has flex direction column, cool, and footer. Foot, 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 footer, footer. Uh, flex direction is not specified here, so that's fine. It just uh, means that it will fall back to the initial value, which is row. So we are good. The web parse the uh, CSS flex direction property. All right, and then. In the formatting context, we need to, um, in our extremely naive flex formatting context, we are now going to choose the direction um, based on um, the flex direction. So here, like, um, I guess we can do something like, uh, wait, first, let's extract the property. So. Flex direction is my box computed values flex direction. Okay. Actually, okay, so let's say like um, vertical uh, or horizontal. Let's ignore the reverse thing and let's just say like whether it's horizontal or vertical. So horizontal is. Um, column, right? Oh wait, which? <laughs> damn it! Which one is which? Column is vertical, right? So row is horizontal. It's laid out in a in a row. Um, So flex direction or flex direction is CSS row reverse. Okay. So if it's horizontal, we need to compute the width. If it's vertical, we need to compute the heights. So this actually like goes in two separate paths here. Um, It's is probably not the best way of doing this, actually. Uh, maybe we can keep things consolidated. Instead of like branching completely like that, maybe we can branch inside. So like here, we would have like something like this. Um, and then sort of like uh, if horizontal increment x, else y is uh, child box, border box, 
tight. Oh, we were supposed to use a margin box. That's why we added it. <laughs> okay, that was dumb. Height. Yep. Okay. So. But we need to compute the height of items too. So we need to compute the size of each flex item, really. So how do we know the, um, the height of them? I guess some of them will compute it by themselves. Um, hmm. Okay, wait, let's just see what happens if we just run this. I mean, the body element doesn't have any height, so it's still like... Okay, that's a start. So what did we achieve here? Body... Yeah, so he doesn't know his height, so he's confused about that. But it still comes out looking a little bit okay-ish. So the margin box here looks kind of goofy. And I don't know why this is broken into two lines but let's not worry too much about that right now. Why the line break after stack? Oh, I guess it's because we just do every line break possible in our pathetic um, shrink to fit. Yeah, I guess we're, we're always taking the um, preferred minimum width because we don't uh, have any idea how much available space there is. Hmm. Wait, how much is the available space? What would be the available space? Let's look. <sighs> the footer. I guess if we look at the containing block. Who is our containing block in this context? It is the body. Okay, so let's say that the available space is just, or the available width is just the containing, containing block width. What if we just say that? still doesn't solve that issue. So how much is that space anyway? Because I don't know if we have that information that early. Yeah, so it's like 580 pixels wide. to fit with. So max of preferred minimum and available. Hmm. Wait, this, uh, this doesn't quite seem like this is working correctly here. Um, let's see, shrink to fit. Let's just log these. Preferred minimum is, preferred is, and available is. I feel like something is going goof with this computation. And we end up line breaking stack overflow, which I don't want to do. So 91, 92, available 580, okay. Presumably that's Stack Overflow. So what do you actually end up with then? What is the Stack Overflow one? 
Stack overflow, 92 pixels wide. And it ends up broken across lines anyway. Mm, why? Oh, wait, wait, is that because we do the set width thing after we lay out inside? So if we do it before, then it doesn't stick, right? Hmm. Okay, this is very confusing. I'm just uh, trying things at this point. That's very weird looking. Why are they so oversized? Child box, margin box width. Slightly confusing, but all right. Why are they like that? Like, why are they spaced out? That doesn't make sense to me. All well, these fragments are so wide. Like all of these uh, boxes are the same exact width and then they're spaced out so weirdly. And I'm sure that there's an explanation for it, but I am a little bit blind to it. Anyway. Also, it doesn't seem right that the preferred minimum width is 91 pixels for Stack Overflow and the preferred width is 92. Like, the preferred minimum should be um, whatever the width is of the word overflow. So, something here is not quite right, but I think we'll, we'll ignore this and let this be like its own investigation. Unless there's a... I was thinking, like, is there a non-breaking space here? But there wasn't. So... Let's not get uh, stuck in debugging that line break too much. Um, instead, let's just worry about the... Um, um, vertical versus horizontal. Um, margin box thing. Let me just... Uh, oh. Um, hmm. Yeah, so that was meant to be a fix up for this commit. But I guess I can I can just um Type it properly. And layout box margin box height. But how do we uh, improve this at this point? So 
so ignoring the weirdness. Wait, is there actually something that we need to improve? Or is this like a kind of a decent first cut? I guess one thing we could do is compute the height just to be good citizens. So like the body element here has zero height, which is confusing. And it will definitely confuse anybody trying to use like a percentage properties, like um, percentage heights. Same thing with the footer also has zero height. So um, how do we compute the height of a flux container? I guess, um, I guess we do it here, right? So um, if not, or, or the height would be the y. If it's a horizontal one, then the height is confusing. I'm not quite sure. But if it's a vertical one, then um, set height. What if we just do something like that? What happens then? So does that just fix up the body at least? Yeah, so now it's 373 tall. And if we take a look at what that actually means in practice, the body is covering this much. Um, hmm. Yeah, it doesn't take any of the margin into account. So it's not perfect. But it is at least something. And then the footer doesn't have any height. Um, so we can do something extremely... It's just like, this, these are going to be super stupid here. So fix me. Um, this is not correct height calculation. Then compute the height of the entire flex container. Um, let's just place the items on a line. Yeah. Fix me. Support proper um, placement. I mean, we don't need to say fix me everywhere because the whole thing is a big fix me. But uh, we can do something here. Like, um, I don't know, like we get, um, like for a horizontal one, we can figure out like who's the tallest child. And then we'll just say that the um, height of the flex container is the height of the tallest child, right? Tallest child. Um, height and then here we'll simply do like tallest child height is max of tallest child height child box height yeah because then at least at least we'll have like some some height and it won't be perfect, but um, <laughs> so that's our footer. It seems like the the width is also not getting computed very well. Um, so how do we t we need to um, compute the width set width? I guess width in that case is x. And width, in the other case, is like a uh, widest child width. <laughs> this is really goofy. Um, but, 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 we are just making something that resembles something. 
This is not the time to feel self-conscious about correctness. Did we get something resembling some size? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so obviously not perfect nor correct even, but something resembling um, resembling the right values, right? Oh yeah, so now that we compute the height of the footer, uh, the body element is actually able to um, enclose it in its own height. So that comes out looking better. So that's good. Okay, so we're going to commit this, and um, I would say like we're making progress here. Uh, obviously, it's not um, it's far from perfect, but uh, I find that when you're building something as complex as a web engine or an operating system, then you you have to let yourself take these uh, small and crappy steps just so that you can sort of advance forward and discover. Um, the problem space and like learn about what are the moving parts and what are the different systems here that need to interact with each other because if you go into everything thinking that oh this thing is going to be spec compliant from day one uh, at least in my personal experience uh, it's very hard to make any progress like that because it's just so daunting so um, this here is uh, I, I often talk about like the value of building a piece of crap and then iterating on it what you've seen here today is me building sort of a piece of crap <laughs> flexbox uh, layout, and then we can iterate on this and, and improve and, and like learn more as we go. But never underestimate the power of building a piece of crap, because everything starts with a piece of crap. Everything is possible with a piece of crap. Something like that. Anyway. Um, support, uh, very naive, basic, um, very, um, basic support for flex direction. Uh, the flex, the FFC, uh, now supports, uh, both, uh, vertical and horizontal. Um, flex layout. Uh, based on the flex direction property. It's still extremely naive, but at least now you can be naive in two directions. Um, yeah. Let's say something nice here, like um, this. Um, <laughs> this implementation of Flexbox is going to take a lot of work, but hey, um, at least now we we've gotten started. Yes, boom, cool. So, I think that's going to be it for today's video. Uh, if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching and for hanging out. Um, I hope that you saw something interesting here today. And um, I thought this was pretty fun, pretty interesting. I learned a whole bunch of things that I didn't know before. And um, I think... We're probably gonna, <laughs> gonna have to replace basically all the code I wrote today, but um, but that's okay, because now we're started on this. That's what matters. So thank you very much for hanging out, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye.